This is Kevin Ben with Outside the Games. I'm here with a student athlete. Uh, we're in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, we do cover Washington, Oregon, California. Uh, and hashtag student athlete strong. That's something we believe in. And the student athlete, remember said student athlete and then person and player. Well, we have one of those here with us today. It's Yaro Dvoko. Mm -hmm. Yaro, nice to have you on our show. Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah. Well, this show has been pro uh, sponsored and provided by uh, Body Armor. Uh, Body Armor is the better sports drink, obviously. Um, this is something that student athletes do drink and they do love it because it gives them the nourishment that they need to be able to compete. Um, also, we're filled with potassium and many minerals, um, less sugar. The light version, obviously, we see here uh, is something that's been very helpful. So, again, this is a hashtag better sports drink body armor. So, we, we talk a little bit about family life and football, yep. Yaro. Uh, we're going to start off with family because family is, is kind of the pillars of yep. who you are. That makes who Yaro is, okay? Yep. Um, tell me what family, how you would define family for you. Uh, uh, to me, family is just, it's a unit of people. Uh, it's uh, different characteristics that kind of blend together. You know, everybody has to be a unit. They have to be a group. Everybody is working together. And that, you know, e each one of us can be unique, but all our traits and characteristics kind of gel together and it just, you know, it, it is a team. You know, uh, the family is the ultimate team. And I feel, you know, everybody, everybody has to respect each other and love each other to the point where everybody can be okay with and work with each other. Yeah, very much so. You know, some, if you look at the dynamic of family, mm -hmm. uh, the dy dynamics of it, uh, there's relatives that are the support as well, they're that extension of that support. Mm -hmm. But mom and dad play a role. Definitely. And I'll be very clear yeah. here. Uh, for your mom and dad, let's start with your dad. Uh -huh. What kind of characteristics do you say that really help you become the person and player that you are today? Definitely. Uh, you know, my dad's very knowledgeable. I mean, he was, growing up, you know, he was a bodybuilder and then he turned into, he went to be a paratrooper in Toronto. Uh, so he has a lot of knowledge on just, you know, physical development, mental development. Uh, so you know, he, he plays a big part into what he can bring, you know, the small aspects, how I warm up, how I stretch, the very nitty gritty things that just can put me, give my edge. You know, he has a lot of unique and different different uh, ways to achieve that extra one or two percent. Now we'll talk about mom, because again, that's dad. Uh, mom seems to kind of complement mm -hmm. that side of what your dad is able to offer. So tell me how mom is Definitely. characteristics for her. Definitely. Uh, my mom is very gen genuine. You know, I love her to the most. I, and every day that every day that we spend together, we just kind of develop uh, more and more of a personal and just Mm. a beneficial relationship you know mutually we're doing things that are going to help each other and uh, we're just going through processes where uh, you know constructive criticism you know she's put someone that's gonna that's gonna reel me back in you know not not let my head get too big and she's gonna tell me what I need to hear so that way I can stay focused and have my best she always has my best interest and I love her for it she plays the biggest role in my life yeah you know with that uh, so you, you look at those different aspects of the the characteristics that they provide. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's important to have that structure? What what does it do for you? Kind of go in a little bit more detail. What that does for you? Definitely. I mean, you know, it, it's big having having both those role role models in your life. Uh, it really sets you down the right path. I think having someone that's been to where you want to go, that has, you know, been in big 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 industries or has been through medical school, like my mom. You know, they, they put you down the right path of how you need to how you need to be dedicated, how you need to be disciplined, you know, hard work, just putting your head down and grinding through. You know, they've been there and coming as immigrants, uh, both of them were just, both of them had to work very hard to get to where they're at and that's something that's instilled in me. So I appreciate them for that. Now you think about that, that comes into play a lot as you as a person mm -hmm. and that comes through and, and especially when it comes to competing. Definitely. How you see the struggles that they've had to do, Definitely. you're like, okay, I know what they had to go through. Yep. Mine is very minute yep. to compare to that. It's nothing personal, but <laughs> it's nothing personal. But if it's me against you, I'm gonna pick myself. There so, you go. You know, all bets aside, you know, I'm gonna leave the personal, personal opinions away, and it's just competing. Right on, right on. We we talk a little bit about uh, the aspect of mentorship. Yes. You know, mentorship being a big, big, huge mm -hmm. uh, extension to really the family unit. Definitely. Uh, and with mentorship, uh, there's many mentors that fill roles. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe there isn't a mom or a dad, mm -hmm. but really along the way of the student athlete, mentors play a part. Definitely. 
Tell me who your mentors are and why. Um, so I have two really big mentors in my life, and both of them are really tightly knit with just football and kind of the aspects of kind of what I'm doing daily. Uh, so my first one is Coach Eric Rice. He's my positions coach at Skyview. Mm. Uh, you know, I was associated with him in seventh grade all the way through now. Um, he wasn't coaching me back then, but we were going through routines at Air One, which was uh, you know trainings every sun every Sundays and quarterback private trainings wow. uh, with John Charles. Uh, he played for the Falcons in '96, but through that I was able to get associated with him, and I figured out he was a coach here at Skyview. So knowing him and knowing the way he coached and just the kind of what he could bring me and kind of bring out my potential, that was perfect, and it gave me a reason to come up and play for Skyview. And now it's just. I mean, we've had a lot of success. Things that we've done are just meshing really well. And, you know, he's my dude, and I go to war with him every Friday. So we love it, and we're just putting our heads down and just trying to put the state championship up on the banner at Skyview. So has that been something that's been a goal between you been. two it that has been. has been something there? Definitely. I mean, he's been coaching at Skyview for over 11 years. Wow. Uh, he was an O-line coach, and then we went up to the state championship, and, but we lost to Skyline in 2011. Mm. Uh, he coached in that game. Many of our coaching staff is still that have coached in that game are still on the staff. So, I mean, it's a recent memory for them, and last year going into the playoffs, and then a couple years ago going to the semis, it's just inching closer and closer to where we just got to tip it over the edge. And we got the guys, and we're, we're, we're going to do that this year. Nice, nice. Um, Another mentor you can think yeah, of. My, my second mentor is Coach Dominic Rocky. Oh, uh, he moved down. You know him. <laughs> yeah, he came down from Seattle. Uh, he went to Auburn Riverside, or yeah, Auburn Mountain, Auburn Mountain View, and then he went and played quarterback at Wazoo. Uh, he now trains with QB Alliance. Uh, so you, know, you see the uh, quarterback academy. You know, very popular in the in the, the SeaTac Tacoma area. Um, but I've been training with him since my sophomore year. Uh, he's a guy that's just put me through rigorous workouts, put me through how to get mentally prepared in games breaking down film, going to his house, doing film sessions, doing all kinds of you know, extra work in the summers and then just getting myself locked in. I mean, he also is a very big guy, a uh, very big reason for pushing me out to go to showcases, getting me ready for showcases, and just kind of training and breaking down everything. You know, He's a guy that's been, he went and played Division I football. That is my goal, that's what I'm on the path to doing, and I really credit him a lot for what he's done. You know, he's, my, he's my guru. If, yeah, that's a nice word you put in there because when you look at a guru too, uh, there's he's, some, low, he's a Yoda. A yeah. kind of <laughs> There's something about where I believe that he's kind of that person that provides that balance and yes. that that focus, uh, not to be shaken. Yes. Uh, when it comes to a play or get down about a play, Definitely. he's kind of like he has a very short memory. I yep. think he teaches you that. Yeah, very short. And all these guys, all of us, we have short memories. I mean, all that stuff is just we click mentally. We're on the same page. You know, there's you have to have a little madness. And I mean, Rob Williams says everybody's born with a little madness. You mustn't lose it. Mm -hmm. So all I mean, all my quarterback coach, quarterback trainer, and then my quarterback coach at Utah State, Coach Sanford. You know, all of us have that little madness, and we just spark and it clicks. And I love working with those dudes. Wow, there we go. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about the student aspect because yes. we talk about the player. The player is important because again, there's abilities, there's talents that you have to be able to play this game that you love so much. Mm -hmm. But let's look at an aspect of the uh, the side of a student. Yes. Obviously, the student athlete, and that's the student first. Mm -hmm. You got to have the classroom down. Definitely. Right. Definitely. Tell me. Let's let's take a, a part of this. Is kind of our student athlete challenges section. But let's take a look at and and dig deep for you, Yara, uh -huh. coming to Skyview, eighth grade, hopping right over to freshman year mm -hmm. of Skyview. Mm -hmm. Tell me what that experience was like. Definitely. Well, Skyview, I mean, it was a perfect match for me. Uh, I, Coach, Co Co Coach Rice, knowing him since seventh grade, and then they have at Skyview, they have a science, math, technology magnet program. Mm. Uh, what that program allows is you don't need a boundary exception to be accepted into the program. Uh, at that time, my dad was still living in Portland, so I was able for me to get into this into the school. Uh, my sister also was going into this program, and we just kind of really felt incorporated and. Uh, it was a very, it's a very challenging program, but it gives us a lot of great opportunities for after high school. It gets us involved in a lot of extracurricular activities, uh, so it, it leaves a great mark on on a on a di diploma. But it also gives you a lot of personal and life challenges to go through, and I think that stuff's amazing. It can, it taught me way more than what I would be doing at normal classes at, at Skyview. Wow, 
and there's something to be said about you probably remember that orientation uh, again a bigger school mm -hmm. uh, more class size uh, mm -hmm. more students uh, in the in that school mm -hmm. was there some adjustments you had to make from, from coming from eighth grade to freshman year definitely what I were mean, those like I mean in, in middle school we had block classes and we had different you know passing times were shorter lunches were lunches were all kinds of different times so going in there is just you know on a, on a time on a, on a clock it's different completely different mm -hmm. you're waking up almost an hour earlier but then you have but throw in football practice football games I mean freshman year I remember we had a game two days after the first day of school oh, wow so you get into school and then the next day you're wearing your jersey because you're playing on a Thursday <laughs> freshman year and, wow. and then you're playing the game so it gets pretty crazy but I mean we have a lot of older guys that took us under their wings and the coaching staff does a great job making sure everybody's on the same page so it would it was a less bumpier of a ride. It was a lot of damage control that happened. So, I think it was teacher student relationship. There's a dynamic there. Mm -hmm. you, you look at the fact that the teacher's there to teach. They're supposed to, you know, impart information to get you ready for life and yeah. some sense of college, right? Yes. Prep you for that. Mm -hmm. Then the student itself has got is an athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, can be an athlete or just a regular student. Yes. We always ask this question. Now, first of all, where does Yarrow sit in the classroom? <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm up front, uh, you know. Is there benefits to that? Yes, there is because I like, I'm a, I'm a very interactive learner, you know, uh, a teacher that's lecturing all the time doesn't quite sit with me, doesn't click for me as well. So being able to be hands-on, ask questions, I mean, so I, you know, not going to lie, I most likely do get annoying in the classroom because of so many questions I ask, but I like being interactive, I mean. I'm a visual learner and you know sometimes I don't understand quite if you know it's just a bunch of notes. So I need to be interactive with my teacher. So I do sit up front most of the time. How is it that qualities as a teacher have to have in order for the, the student mm -hmm. to be successful in the class? Oh definitely. I mean this is actually a great topic because we have a lot of we have a tremendous teachers at Skyview. And all these teachers have, have characteristics in common of they're very enthusiastic, they're lively, sometimes they do get loud, and that's actually a great technique because mm -hmm. students are falling asleep or they're not paying attention, they hear a loud noise, they're locked they're, in they're again. Up. Yeah. Right, so it might be changing your tone. Monotone teachers are very tough to learn from, for me. I mean, I had monotone science teachers and they were just, they would just put me to sleep. You know? right. No offense, but you know, right. they're, not, they're not very interactive and engaging. But we have a long list of just enthusiastic, very informal, and just lively teachers that make you want to learn. They make you come to class ready to, you know, you have your notes yeah. out, you have everything out, you're ready to learn. And it's easy as that. If you have an interactive teacher, school is so much easier. Yeah. Now let's flip that. Mm -hmm. For a student, what does a student have to possess as far as their characteristics Definitely. to make the teacher successful? Definitely. Um, I mean, a student just has to be willing to learn. You know, even as every, you hear that players need to be coachable, a student has to be willing to learn. If a student comes to school saying, hey, a student walks into class and says, hey, okay, this is sixth grade English, I don't want to learn today, I just, I'm just going to sleep. You're already coming in there with an attitude knowing you're not going to go, you're not going to prepare, you're not going to succeed in that classroom that day. It might not affect you next week, but for that day you have 0% intake of what you learn. You come in that class saying, hey, I want to make sure I get all these notes down and make sure I know this. I want to come out knowing this learning target or mm. just this, this lesson I want to understand mm -hmm. it completely. You come in with that, with that, with that mindset, you're a hundred times already more well set knowing that you're going to go in there, you're going to attempt it with enthusiasm, you know, and you're going to get interactive help from the teacher. So just having your mindset coming into class is the number one thing, I think. Well, that's right, that's wrong. For you, Yaro, do you think it's important for a teacher to know that you're a student athlete? Does that, does that kind of make a difference in as far as the, how the teacher maybe treats you or maybe how you treat the class? I mean, how does that work? Well, I think if it's a normal classes, I think the cliche is that, you know, student athletes want to be known and treated as student athletes because there is more homework loads and, you know, it, is, it does get tougher with more assignments and the finals coming in towards, uh, you know, towards fall seasons and spring seasons, you have, you have a lot of added weight to it. Uh, but I mean, for me personally, I don't really think that makes too much of a difference. I've been in the SMT program for three years. Most of those kids aren't in, ac in athletic activities. Mm -hmm. They might be in robotics or a coding or some kind of different uh, volunteering aspects after school. So mm -hmm. there's not too much that, you know, they give and take with student athletes. So just, they, they don't cut too much slack. So just you gotta adapt. It doesn't give me too much problem, so that yeah. good. 
Is Yaro a good test taker? Mm. What'd you yeah. say? Because I think when the lights turn on, yeah, I got that's when I that's when I work the best. So if I know I got a test Friday, I got when, I got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to prepare, I'm gonna kill it. Uh, if I know there's not too much pressure on it, I'll kind of just relax. That's kind of my fault, but I know when the lights turn on and the pressure's on, that's when I work my best. Mm. What do you do? What kind of tools do you use to organize yourself for school and to, you know, what do you do to prep for a test? That Take means, me into two of those I things. I mean, the way, that, the way that a lot of the, my classes are taken is we have uh, learning targets and we have t success criteria that we okay. go through. So we know every day when we walk into class, we're, we're writing this down knowing at the end of the day, I should know this. And mm. if you don't, well then you gotta go over and you gotta learn it. So you know, you have a milestone every single day, a little step by step, knowing I have to know this so I can get the whole big picture later on. Um, so that's a big part is just knowing what you have to accomplish for that day. No, that's important. Do you send, tend to use your the technology? We have a lot of technology yeah. oh, today yeah. Oh, yeah. to kind of help us become organized, set yep. reminders or whatever it is. Do you use those tools to help yeah. you? Yeah, I mean, we get iPads for school. Uh, I mean, they work great. We oh, have nice. Our, we have Google Docs, <laughs> Google Slides. We do everything on Google. I mean, I think that's just the best way. It keeps everything organized. Uh, next year, we're going to go, I think, into uh, not MacBooks, but I think we're going to get uh, some kind of tablet or a computer. I'm, I'm not sure which one it is, but we're gonna upgrade it. So mm. I think that's be. I think that would be even more successful because you can type easier on it. Uh, but I think all the programs on there just empower students. It gives it a really easy way. I like how you use that. It empowers students to mm -hmm. be successful. Because obviously the technology today in the world today, in the workplace, obviously that's preparing you for that. Definitely. Uh, doing those things and in college. I mean, got college. They utilize technology as well. Definitely. Let's talk about um, media. Something mm -hmm. interesting about media today for the student athlete is that there's a lot of attention yeah. that's thrown on social media. Let's Definitely. just say that. You know, you have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, You're Snapchat. About, like, personal aspects or football? football. They, they kind of work together. I mean, yeah. they, there's personal sides, but there's also, too, the football Definitely. side. Definitely. How do you think a student athlete should try to handle their media? Yeah. Um, I think one recipe that kind of worked out for me was, you know, a lot of recruiting and a lot of things happen on Twitter in regards to sports or just kind of your, your athletic life. I think, I mean, for myself, I believe that Twitter has at, at least 90% of all the football recruitment, all the football, you know, highlights. It's changed a lot. Yes, I feel it's yeah. very one-sided on Twitter. It's a very organized, it's a very clean, very professional uh, formatted page. Uh, and then my, my more personal, more social life is more on Instagram and those pictures, family members, you know, those my friends. So I kind of keep it balanced by keeping football, you know, I can post about football things on my social, social life, but recruitment and all kinds of the more statistical and informational is kept on my Twitter. Mm. And then Snapchat is just messaging and, all, and you know, just quick contacts with people. So they kind of have their own little category, respectively. So Yaro, you know, with seven on seven, you know, we're going to discuss seven on seven here. There's a lot of high school coaches that believe seven on seven, it's, it's they don't like it. Just to be honest with you, some coaches just don't like it because they feel that seven on seven is getting taking away something from the yeah. the coaching aspect yeah. from them from yeah. the from the high school team, yeah. and then implementing some kind something new, a new wrinkle, mm -hmm. as it were. Uh, what is your take on seven on yeah. seven, and what, how does it benefit you as a player and a person? I think personally, for me, uh, playing with a club team, you know, playing with Dominic Rocky for the last couple of years, and just training with him in general, uh, you know, I think he he's someone. You know, high school coaches, especially here in Washington, they can't coach you all year round. Uh, they have strict strict laws and strict rules on what days, on what days, or how many days and in a given period they can coach you. And that's a so, WIAA thing. Yeah, so it's a whole statewide oh, thing. So, uh, you know, we're doing QB drills in, in the mornings at school, but we don't have no, we don't have a football, uh, you know, because if, if you have a football, coach can't be in the room. Um, but it gives me an opportunity to work with a separate trainer, a private trainer, uh, and get extra, extra field work, extra mental work, and kind of develop you. It gives you more opportunities, and I think the more opportunities, the more, you know, chances of success you can have. Uh, I also think that playing 7-on-7 seven seven for a club is beneficial uh, if, you're, if you're treating it right. But I think playing 7-on-7 seven seven and passing league with your high school team, with your high school coaches, I think that's just untoppable. 
uh, there's nothing better you can do than going and competing mm. in a quick paced, very, very efficient and high rep environment. You know, you're playing, you're, you're calling your plays, you're throwing to your receivers, you're playing against, you know, teams that you're going to potentially see in the future. Mm. So it's mixing all kinds of things. You're putting in all kinds of good, good, good things into the recipe and it comes out, you can't have anything wrong come out of it. The thing is, is that with seven on seven, there's something from an aspect of the of the personal side. I mean, you have the development for football, but how does seven seven help help you compete as a person? Yeah, I think on seven on seven, and depending what situation you're in. For me, it really opened up my eyes when I went to Las Vegas as a freshman. Oh. Uh, we were going, and we was, we went there, and we kind of. Kind of got a taste to see, you know, what other talent there is in the nation. We got our first taste and seen, yo, Texas has some really big dudes. Hawaii has some really big dudes. Mm. You know, even even Las Vegas and and the Nevada areas have some really good athletes. Wow. So maybe come back and and just say, hey, like if I really want a good shot at this, I understand there's other guys that are other, you know, hundreds of miles away from me that are twice as big, twice as fast. So, you know, you got to understand it gives you a realistic image. I think that's a really good eye-opening thing because it made me work harder, made my friends work harder that went with me and got a good look at you know the other players that are around. So it gave us a good taste. That's I think it was a really good thing. Yeah, and I think it's something that because it happens more often. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one thing if you were to take a high school team and you're competing mm -hmm. during the high school season. Sometimes that's downtime for some players, but a lot of players have seen that. Look, I want to still compete. Yeah. Even though I'm not able to put a, a helmet and shoulder pads yeah. and the equipment on. I still want to be able to compete and make Definitely. sound decisions when it comes to decision making on progressions and oh, looking yeah. at your receivers, oh, yeah. uh, the timing, having the timing down, the footwork. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that's something that Dominic Rocky obviously hits on mm -hmm. a lot with you is about the, the footwork, the timing, the progression reads yep. that you have to make. Yep. I mean, you know, having him, you know, we work throughout the week, but working on weekends specifically with a dedicated group, that was perfect. I mean, we were, he was putting us in game-like situations, playing against older older players, playing against former college players, putting us in two-minute drill, two-minute drives, you know, mm. putting us in all kind of game-like situations. You know, we're down by how many we need to score this many. So it mentally really prepares you, and it kind of puts everything you work on physically as an individual drill, and it implements it into a game-like situation. And then at the end of it, you get this you get this boiling pot of just you know as as real as realistic repetitions you can get without having helmets and shoulder pads on you know i find it interesting with the whole seven on seven thing you bring in showcases yep something about showcases when you talk about those are this individual they're looking at your skills right, right? your skills and, and abilities how do you throw the football in which way are you looking um for your receiver how do you look for your receiver do you get it to them timing wise mm -hmm. um what I noticed though about the showcase is that there's this time where at the end it's like a receiver one on one, yep. a receiver actually going yep. a one on one with the DB, yep. and you as a quarterback have to make a. a you don't even know that player. Some mm -hmm. of these players you don't know, Definitely. or you so don't know their tendencies. No, yeah. no, there is no chemistry. So you're finding your way. Like I got to get the ball to them. I don't know how they like yep. it. I'm learning this. What does that do for you as a quarterback? I mean, how does that? Uh, that's yeah. got to be something when you experience um, that. I think I think that that combination, that situation right there, is perfect. I mean, I think the the way to truly test how good someone is or how well they huh. they can be put in thrown into a situation, you know, respectively thrown into a situation, not knowing who the receiver is, not knowing their tendencies, not having chemistry. You know, you're in a high pressure atmosphere. You have coaches looking at you in the back. You have college the, coaches college looking coaches, at you. Yeah. You have your peers, the right. people you're competing for the offers in front of you. You're thrown in. How well can you adapt, analyze, you know, perform mm. all the things that you've been repping hundreds and thousands of times throughout the week? You know, all the stuff you put in Monday, Monday through Friday. Does your body fall back onto it into your muscle memory on a Saturday? Mm. Or if you're all the things you work on during the summer, you're playing in the season. When you're about to get sacked and you need to make an elusive drill that you've been, you know, elusive move that you've been drilling in in, in July, are you going to fall back onto it? Is it muscle memory? Mm. I mean, I think that's the best option in those hectic moments. You know, those one on ones throw you in, and that gives you the best look at how athletic and how how uh, just mentally sharp a player is. You, you find know? that a lot. It peels back the layers. Oh, it bingo! Really, there you go. It peels back the layers. You hit that right on the head. Actually, that's that, that's yeah. a perfect analogy of that. Yeah. Um, 
So when you when you look at the fact that you've taken the seven on seven, these showcases, you're now going to be in your senior year. Uh -huh. And we'll get into high school in just a second. Mm -hmm. But has that made Yara well-rounded? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I was doing trainings and showcases and all kinds of competitive tournaments since freshman year. Mm. I've been to a lot of places, been to a lot of states, played with a lot of players that have, you know, I've competed and I've played with a lot of people that are in college where I want to be now. It's given me a really good taste nationally, so I know the guys in the backyard, the guys in Southwest Washington, very great talent, but there's a lot of different branches and a lot of different opportunities and a lot of, you know, people in California, you know, we get rain up here most of the time, but they can practice, play seven days a week, they're going to be faster, they're going to be more trained. So you got to compete against different talent levels and different talent pools all across the country. Interesting. Well, if you're just joining us, this is Yaro Duvolko um, with Skyview High School here in Vancouver, Washington. And uh, he is class of 2020 quarterback and a Utah State commit. Yep. Uh, he's ver <laughs> verbally committed to Utah State. Yes, sir. Uh, Tell me, before we get into talk about high school, what went into that decision? Tell, tell, tell I mean, me, because a lot of times student athletes are waiting, right? They're waiting yeah. for their season. It's interesting on when they pick to commit mm -hmm. verbally, but a lot of them wait to the season, at the end of the season, but you felt strongly about definitely, this. Definitely, tell me how this definitely. whole process went. I mean, you. leading up to the commitment, I, I definitely took back a lot of nights. I lost, lost a lot of sleep just considering every option. Uh, just talking to a lot of mentors, a lot of people that have helped me throughout the time, throughout the years, and just kind of breaking it down, knowing that Utah State is gonna they're gonna put me on the highest competition level. You know, I'm gonna have nationally national exposure. I'm gonna be playing against the top. You know, they were ranked last year. They won 11 games, won their bowl game. You know, they're a competitive team that I want. You know, they're a winning team, and I want to be on a winning team. I'm a winner myself. So, but also, you know, the coaching staff is just. Very high regards, very high ranked coaching staff. Coach, uh, Coach Mike Sanford, you know, he's been a head coach at Western Kentucky. He's been quarterback coach, OC at Boise State, Notre Dame, Stanford. So a lot of pedigree. He has. He's been. He's, wow. You know, we're really big on talking about. He he's been produced six quarterbacks in the NFL, and he's saying, "Hey, I'm taking you under my wing. I'm going to make you my seventh. So I'm just, you know, I'm ready to go hey, war with go. him, and we're going. So I'm locked in." Uh, another big thing was also they have, uh, you know, my career choice later on. They want this was big though. This was, this was this really was big to big. you uh, Coach, academically. Coach Stacy Collins, you know, he's a very he was kind of my academic advisor when I was going on the trip, and uh, I mentioned that I wanted to be in sports medicine. He was saying, hey, we have a perfect we have a perfect bachelor's for that. They have human movement science. Mm. Uh, so out of that, you know, I can become a PE teacher from K through 12, or I can go and later on get my bachelor's in human movement and then later on transition to a medical school or uh, to be a doctor of chiropractic or a physical therapist. Wow. So that's you have a, lot, a wide range to kind of decide to go into. For me, that was perfect. As soon as I heard that, I was like, hey, I'm on board. They play well. You know, they look, they look good. Their stadium is beautiful, beautiful facilities. You know, Logan, Utah is just beautiful by itself, rolling mountains everywhere you look. Uh, and just knowing that, they have, knowing that they have the academic choice that I want was perfect. So it was spot on for me. And for you, though, too, was the aspect of an athlete to finally make a verbal commitment oh, yeah. and not really, they make it now mm -hmm. rather than make it later. Yeah. It, does it feel like, some have said, some student athletes have said that it feels like a big oh, weight off my shoulders. It feels like you just racked your squat max. I mean, we, I, I committed the night before we went into team camp. So we were going to Western Oregon for team camp, and I wasn't getting recruited from there, not very much, but um, just going into camp knowing, hey, all this, you know, I have this weight off my shoulder, I'm committed, uh, I'm in a great, really great spot, I can now focus 100% on my team, and that's exactly what we did. We didn't lose a single game at camp, uh, we win, won the 707 tournament, we had fourth and five goal line call outs, you know, just really, really enjoyed having that camp experience, and now it's... 100% focus on summer workouts, throwing, getting my workouts in, and then getting ready and polished for the season and giving the best shot and, you know, trying to run the table in state this year. There you go. And speaking of the season here for Skyview, Skyview last year, um, they had made it to playoffs uh, in their 4A GHSL? Yep, GSHL. GHSL. Um, Ranger State Helens League. There we go. And they faced a Woodenville team. Yeah. And, and, and we mentioned this because 
that was a very pivotal game for Yarrow in a sense of like what went into that game is having you know your your receiver Mason Wheeler of course we had him on the show uh, Jelani McGee we've had him on the show but you lost Jelani yeah. that was a big blow you had to prepare yep. and find other ways to win that game mm -hmm. Woodenville obviously you know moved on that just last year what let's just take that experience what did that do for you Yaro in your development and yeah. preparing your mind and saying you know what I can't just settle for what I know and what I've learned I got to do more mm -hmm. well definitely I mean just knowing you know just the topic of discussion just proves that Jelani is a very special player on our offense I mean I think we have the best backfield in the state I think he's the best running back in the state uh, unfortunately he was out on injury uh, against Camus and that was leading into playoffs so not having him really kind of took a toll on our offense. You know, we went from running the ball about 25 times, throwing about 35, to flopping it completely going about 45, mm. 50 passes a game. It worked out pretty well, so I think we might keep it up this year. <laughs> but just, right. you know, Jelani just brings a dynamic aspect to our game. You know, it's a one-two punch. You can swing him out. The, you can hand him the ball. He'll, he'll run it 70 yards. You're not chasing him down, or we can swing it out wide in the perimeter to him, and he's going to make moves. He's going to make plays for us. And you have other players there that we, are stepping yes, up. Yeah, you know? definitely. And so that kind of not having him in the offense really mixed in, and you know, still we had a lot of bread and butter things that still worked. You know, Mason Wheeler and I had a great game against Woodenville. Uh, a lot there was a lot of supporting cast that went into it. You know, we have young guys, Xavier Owens. He's going to be a baller this year. You know, he's taking all the right, making all the right moves in all in all the seven on seven and offseason things. So it really made a lot of guys step up, and we know, hey, it was crunch time. We played at Pop Kinney, which is one of the most historic stadiums. Man, it's amazing. One You've of been the most there. historic stadiums in Washington, yeah. playing the best, the you know, top five team in the state. You know, I think they were ranked number two at the time, mm -hmm. and just we've been there, we've done that. You know, Skyview's been there, Skyview's done that. So we're just going to keep doing it. You know, right. there's nothing, there's no. There's nothing that we haven't checked off yet, except winning the winning the state championship. And, and, so, and you guys bring a little, a lot of your line back. Is that right? Your offensive Jack Nishke, line. We Jack have Nishke. back at center, uh, and then we're actually moving a couple. We have to we have to kind of shuffle around. We have a younger guy starting at right tackle, and then we have Josiah Cochran, who we just picked mm. up a Southern Oregon and a Western or uh, Western Oregon uh, offer last couple weeks. Wow! But he's been a really big, really big time guy on our in that left tackle spot. You know, he's a really big frame guy, mm. and I mean, he's been a really good friend since middle school. So I told him, hey, I need you blocking for him. I don't trust anybody else but you. And he said, I got you, and that's how we roll. Did do you see this? Quarterbacks love their offensive yeah, line. They, <laughs> they have that good relationship. And so do the running backs. They got to love it. They get the holes, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's talk about the season. You know, that was what happened last year. Yeah. This year, you have motivation to win state. Definitely. And, and to really do something special. What do you feel that you've learned from last year to now apply this yeah. year for you personally yeah. as a quarterback for Skyview? I think I think for us it's mental. Uh, I, I don't think there's a phys there's no physical capabilities that we haven't met. Uh, there's no physical you know goals that we can't achieve because we know our, our offseason strength program, our, our conditioning, you know the way we practice is just phenomenal. So for us it's mental and one thing that's on our side for that part is that like I was saying, we've been at Pop King and we've played these. You know, they're not going to have the state championship in the Tacoma Dome any year, uh, right. anymore this year. So we learned that this year, yes. It's going to be a neutral playoff site. So we've been and we've played in the biggest atmospheres. We've played against the hardest teams. You know, all our losses uh, combined came from, respectively, in their divisions, 4A, 3A, 2A, were less than uh, you know top five. They were top five contenders in the state at the end of the year. So we played against really great competition. We have. We have the same schedule, just, you know, home and away games flipped. Mm. So, you know, we start off with Yelm week one, and we're going to we're gonna set the tone, and we're going to keep going and keep climbing uphill all the way through the Is playoffs. it pretty much your approach this year? Maybe be different from last year, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. But it's one game mentality. Yes, definitely. One game at a time, time, you have to be that way. Every time. You can't think about, oh, we're playing these people up ahead. You're playing, you have your game plan for that week. That's who your game plan, your game plan is. You play, you kick ass on Friday, and then you can worry about next week. Mm -hmm. You can worry about who you're playing after that. But you take care of one day at a time, one practice at a time, one game at a time, one opponent, one win at a time. So We know you know you play in the offense, Yarrow, who has a quarterback. You got Mason Wheeler, Jelani McGee. Um, you have, it looks like some people coming up, mm -hmm. backing up Jelani, because again, they had some playing time yep. last year when Jelani went down. Yep. But talk about your defense. 
Oh, yeah. uh, if you look at your defense, defense, it, it, could you say the motto's true? Defense wins championships, yes. I mean, in some yes. sense, right? Yes, and our head coach is a defensive, you know, he's a defensive personnel guy. You know, he loves defense. Me and him get, a, get along great. Coach Steve Kaiser, he's a great guy. Uh, but, you know, our defense is really locked in. I mean, our D-line is nasty. We have linebackers that are flying around the field. You know, test our corners, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. And then our safeties are just absolute ball hawks. We got guys that are, that are just covering the field like no other. And I play against these guys every day in practice. And I'm doing my best to shred them up, but they get the best of me. <laughs> That's what to say. They compete. They, they compete. <laughs> they you compete. know, I, I, I spark them up. I get under their skin. So they're ready to have a guy that's talking trash to them all game long. They're right. ready to guy have, that's going to do the most. So I want to give them the best look. And I think that we're just, everything's clicking. You know, during camp, they shut it down. I mean, we played the best teams that they couldn't even score once or twice in a scrimmage. So, wow. I mean, we're playing, we're playing really good, sound defense. What is your coaching staff? You know, you talked about Steve Kaiser, Coach Kaiser. What has your your position coach, coaching staff, and the coaching staff at Skyview meant for your team? And yeah. and we know on an individual basis how you've been groomed and, and how your year is to look this year as your senior year. This is your last year mm -hmm. but as a team how have these coaches prepped you guys yeah. for this moment to be ready to play yeah. and, and and try to get ready for state i mean for our, for our team and our, the way our staff communicates the way our staff holds each other accountable you know as as men amongst each other and this isn't this is not in regards of like the uh, us as athletes but how they carry themselves around each other as a staff mm. uh, that is the biggest testament to what our brotherhood our, our, our culture our mentality should be because there are guys that have been coaching for multiple plus years 10 some guys have been coaching for 10 15 years together mm. but they're in workouts they're working out together they're working out with us they're mm. at breakfast club with us they're waking up at six in the morning to be with us summer workouts there's always multiple coaches in there shaking guys up, you know, talking, you know, chatting. So for us, the biggest emphasis they put on us is having a culture, having a brotherhood, because fourth quarter against Woodenville, third quarter, we needed guys that, hey, I knew, I know Mason's my brother, I, know, I love him, we've, we've grinded it out, and I know I can go to him. And that's, that's the direct result of a brotherhood, and you know, I got his back, he's got my back, because that, that way I know I'm going into fourth quarter, I know this is my guy, this is who I'm gonna rock with. Yeah. That's the biggest point that I think our, our coaches emphasize towards us. Now, do your coaches also look at an aspect of the academics? They're prepping you for the academics yep. as well. So as a team, do you guys have like a study hall that you guys do together? Or do you guys make sure that you guys, uh, that really the, the seniors are looking out after yeah, everybody definitely. in a sense of like holding them accountable? Definitely. I mean, all of our seniors guys have taken, you know, uh, we say we take one guy from each grade. We take a freshman, sophomore, and a junior under our wing. And that and, and just levels down wise. A junior takes a sophomore to freshman. So you have these guys that you're accountable for, and you, you know you, you're you're the big brother for them. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. Happened to me my freshman, sophomore, and junior year. You know I had I had really good mentors that they get your met your mind frame into this. You know you got to work out this many times a week. You got to be doing this nutritionally, but you have to be taking care of your grades. You have to be showing up to class. Uh, our coaching staff, you know, That's they're, big. they're 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 I think. There's only two or three that are outside of the building, so all of them are teachers inside the building. You see them every day, you see them passing through classes, and if you have a bad grade, they know about it. They're gonna get onto you about it. So that's a great thing is they hold you accountable. You know, sometimes it is a little uncomfortable knowing, hey, oh, I have a C in this class, and my quarterback coach knows about it, so he's gonna come and tell me about it. That puts me in a personal, you know, personal little conflict, so I'm gonna do my best because I don't want him to look negatively on me. Oh, that's a good, a good approach. Holds it accountable, and you know it's a little uncomfortable, you know, that they're coming to you, which makes it that makes it easier for me to go and do my work because I know I have external motivation to go and do it and mm -hmm. fix it. Well, I tell you, it's been a, a pleasure to have uh, Yaro Devoko uh, on our program here at Outside the Games. I'm Kevin Minton, host. Um, of course, student athlete strong. Uh, we deal with Washington, Oregon, California, and nationwide. Uh, but this is a class of 2020 quarterback for Skyview here in, in uh, Vancouver, Washington. He is ready to compete. He's ready to gather his teammates. They are looking to get to state and really bring home a trophy. Mm -hmm. That's obviously the, the ultimate goal. They, shell, they fell short last year, uh, but this is motivation for them this year. Definitely. And again, this is a Utah State commit. Go Aggies. Go, <laughs> Go Aggies. Uh, for Yarrow. And so 
Well, I tell you, it's been a pleasure to have you Thanks on our program. Oh, you. man, Thank been you. a pleasure because Definitely. we learned a lot about you and yeah. you as a person and a player and a student athlete. That's I been important. It. I appreciate it. But we're not done. We have this thing called the Blitz. Uh, yeah, blitz. Quick blitz of questions for you. Okay. We're going to start out favorite food, Yarl. Favorite food, anything that has spaghetti, red sauce, <laughs> and meat. So that's lasagnas, <laughs> spaghetti, pasta, you know. Adding your carbs and your protein, I love it. Man, we take you to an Italian restaurant. I mean, I think that's the idea. I love it. Um, favorite dessert? Dessert? Mmm, I think I love pumpkin pie. My grandma cooks the best pumpkin pie in the world, so that's hands down my favorite. Now, now let me be clear about something. Is I've heard a lot about this dessert, and I finally had it. Yeah? The pizookie. The pizookie, okay. So, Mason, I know, loves the pizookie. Mm hmm and there are other athletes. I don't think I've tried it. I don't think I've had you it. You haven't yet. had it, it yet. It doesn't sound quite familiar to me. Uh, okay, it's a cookie with mm -hmm. ice cream melted with chocolate, and it's warm. That sounds great. <laughs> I, mean, I, I had it, it for the first time, and everybody was telling me about it. Uh -huh. uh, I, it's just been crazy. So I finally had it. It was great. Yeah, I didn't know if maybe teammates, mm -hmm. right? They no, talk I've not about tried it. it yet, but that sounds okay. amazing. All right. Definitely gonna try it. Um, Apple or Android, and why? Uh, we'll go Apple. You know, I was a big Android guy because a lot of customability. You know, you don't have iCloud. Okay. You have an open source network, so that means you can download a lot of off, off the App Store apps and applications. Yeah. So that's kind of sketchy, kind of risky. You'll get your viruses and you probably get in trouble. <laughs> they, uh, truth. But I think right. Apple. Apple is a very. It's a very. You know, sorry. It's it's a basic platform. It's simple to use. You know, everything is kind of organized and folded to the way you like it. Mm. So I think ease of use, iPhone, yeah. uh, you can argue camera quality and all kinds of things between each other because they kind of just try to, you know, tip of the iceberg every year. But Yaro sounds technical. I mean, that you know, breaks it down for you know, me. I, I, I I've appreciate had to make, that. I've had to sit there at Best Buy and make the decision. You know, right. I got an iPhone, I got iPhone A, or, you know, I can get a Samsung, <laughs> you know, S8 Plus. So I've had to sit there and make that decision. Sure, yeah. You, know, you got to be informed with it. You know what's involved. Um, Favorite cleat to wear? Favorite thing to wear? Favorite cleat. Cleat, okay. Um, I've been in love with the Under Armour Highlight High Top all my life. Uh, it's, you know, I've, I play basketball and I've rolled my ankles way too many times to mm. count. So my ankles are always the number one priority for me. Uh, I end up rolling them either way, but having something that's extra support there is just, you know, it gives that little that little comfort, that little tightness that you want. You feel good. You feel you feel bounce. You feel like a rub, you're a rubber band. Oh, okay. You feel you know. Yeah. You're ready to explode. So. Favorite shoe to wear. Favorite shoe to wear. Uh, I have to go with classic Air Jordan ones. They're comfy. Ooh. They slip on. You know, high tops. You can go almost with anything. Okay. Uh, and if you have to go for a low, you can go. You know, summer summer outfit. You can go some cargo shorts. So. I mean, everybody. A lot of the student athletes like to go the Jordan Elevens. Yeah. But you brought it old, old, like old school. Ones. I like the ones because they're not saying too much. And everybody has Concords. Everybody has, you know, everybody has seven. So. I like the ones that they're very classy and I have a great blue pair that match with everything so I like wow. that. Okay. Favorite musical artist right now that you are listening to hmm. if you had to turn one on or listen to it? I think right now to get hyper I like NLE Chopper. Uh, he's kind of he, yeah. he's more of a violent figure but you know you got to put in work you got to be under that bar you got a weight room weight room hype it's real so get something that's going to get you moving. Uh, and, you know, kind of getting the vibes, I like Lil Uzi. Lil Uzi has a lot of, you know, he's a vocalist, and he's a very good vocalist, but he also has a lot of lyrical genius to him. So the way they play together, I love it. Favorite destination spot, if you could choose one in the world today to visit? Oh, to visit? Oh. To visit, I really, I really love tropical, you know, I love the palm tree, you know, white beaches, beautiful blue, blue water, so I love that. Uh, probably... Caribbean. My mom's been to Jamaica. And I haven't. I haven't been to Jamaica yet. Oh wow! I heard that's a very nice place. But Guatemala, I think, would have to be my place. Wow. Guatemala. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I love. I haven't the, heard that one, so that's a good. I love the culture, and I love the way that you know the culture really inspires the people to to, to live a, a separate and a different kind of life than you know a lot more of the the Caribbean or Icelandic life. So. I really like I really like how they live over there. PlayStation or Xbox? Which is it? I have both. I have both. Uh, oh, okay. My friends in Portland play a lot on Xbox, and then I have a lot of friends up here that play PlayStation. So tag name? You have a tag name? Yeah, mine. Uh, I had like 12 gauge uh, for a long time, 
but my Xbox place, uh, my Xbox username is Yaroslav1234. Keep it simple. There you go. You know, nothing where you know, it's easy to type out. So add me on that if you want to play. <laughs> there you go. He's willing. He's willing. Um, for you, let's, let's get serious on a couple notes here. One is if you were running late somewhere, and as a quarterback, you have to have a lot of control oh, yeah. over your offense and wh who's doing what and yeah. knowing what the, where the play is going. Yeah. The ins and outs. Right. If you were running late somewhere, would you call or text and why to let you know you're running late? Oh, you got to call, uh, especially if, you're gonna, if you need a you know, couple minute notice. If you have to get a hold of them that second, you got to call. I mean, I, if I could get rid of a, you know, SMS messaging and just use phone call, I love it. But people don't pick up. People don't pick up nowadays, so you know, <laughs> text you, you just ha you just have to text. But, but know, I yeah. call my parents, I call my friends. If I need something, you know, need something done quick, it's a ring away. Go. So oh, there you go. Uh, if you had to drive a car, any car you could pick, or an SUV, mm -hmm. which which would that be? Man, uh, I've always thought, you know, just as a kid, like rookie paycheck, I'm buying my mom a house, and then I'm buying a Rolls Royce Wraith. <laughs> it's got priorities, man. Yeah, you know, I want right. to get a Wraith. I want to get a big car. You know. You know, they got the stars on the ceiling and they got all the luxuries in it. So wow, okay. I love it. There you go. You know, bigger frame guy, you know, you got to be able to lay back <laughs> and be comfortable in it. There you go. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, are you a earphones guy or a headphones guy? Hmm, well. Because the headphones go on top of the head, yeah. and they're big, yeah. but the earphones are going right in the ear. So you know, what? I really liked, I really like the Bose Solo like series. You know, uh. they have a little bit of soundproof. I know Sony makes some good over the ear ones that are sure. just soundproof, but you know, the AirPods work really well. But sometimes I don't think the the, the noise cancellation in them is as great. Sure. I think the wired headphones for Apple are just a little bit louder. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I think if I'm going into a game environment or I'm going on a plane, I want over the ear, just some comfortable Beats solos. So there over the go. ear headphones, I think over would have headphones. to take the win. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, back to a serious point here. If Yarrow could change one thing in the world today, have an impact on to change something, because you know you see a lot of economic mm -hmm. issues, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, poverty. I mean, just a lot of different type yeah. of things. What would be that one thing that you could um, think that you could have an impact on or change think, or help? I think for me personally, you know, I have a lot of family in Ukraine. We have a lot of we have a lot of ties to, you know. I would say a broad spectrum of the you know economic classes in Ukraine. You know we have mm -hmm. we have politicians in my family. My uncle's a politician. He's actually in the government building every single day. Wow. Uh, but then we have lots of people that live still live in villages in the mountains. And, you know, you know, going there, you visit and you see this broad variety of some people don't have this much, and some people you know, the the most recent most recent president there, he actually got uh, impeached because you know he was spending the tax return money on his estates. You know, he had like eight mansions. Wow. He had private petting zoos. He had koi ponds. He had he had a golden toilet, you know, all kinds of beautiful art, architecture. And you can, and we were actually able to go and walk through this estate. And it, wow. it's a whole day adventure of just, this is just an overwhelming amount of money that, so I guess my answer to it would be government corruption. That would be my, mm -hmm. my official answer because there's a lot of, you know, it all trickles down to rich people take are, are taking money from the poor, and the poor people happen to be my family. So I, I think if that could be fixed, and you know that that wealth can be spread or used to where it is needed to be, I think that would that would help a lot. You or know? build an initiative to yes. work together to yes. be stronger. Yes. Wealth, yes. you know, more wealth together. Yeah, you know, and not just taking it to so like, hey, I already have three farms on my estate, and I have all these cars. Why? There's no reason to build mm. a canal. You know, there's all kinds of, you know. <laughs> right. There was a lot of crazy right. stuff, you know, and I That's went crazy. on a tour in this guy's, this guy's estate, and it was just, it was not, not fair taking that, that money and putting it wow. into his own pocket. That's deep. Oh, that's yeah. deep. For you, what I wanted to ask you was, what was the last movie you saw in the theater? Oh, last movie I saw in the theater. Man, I couldn't. I can't even remember that. We don't go to movies very often. We watch them at home. Uh, we have a we have a good home. So you're theater, so. you're a lot Netflixing, 
yeah. Hulu. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of ways. You're, you're, you're doing it on. Definitely. I've been big in the 70s show. I get caught on that, and I'm just <laughs> watching that. I'm binge watching that, you know. If, it's, if the girlfriend's over or if I got friends over, we're watching it. Uh, so go. I love it, you okay. know. Okay. You know, you got to take time to rest sometime throughout the day and something funny you just put on, enjoy, and I love it. Very much so. We believe in, here on Outside the Games, we believe a lot in the student athlete in a sense of stronger student athletes make stronger communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you feel that, what is it that Yaro, or maybe Skyview, maybe you've done something like that, where you could get, what kind of thing would you like to get active in the community and doing? Yeah, uh, I mean, what we do for Skyview is we have, there's a lot of youth football programs, so we'll go and we'll ref games, we'll go clean up, set up fields, we'll go sell concessions to the parents of the people that, the kids that are playing. Oh, okay. Uh, so we take a big part into our youth football, youth football like programs, and, and it, you know, it does bring in a good spotlight to Skyview, so those kids are, they're likely to come to Skyview. Sure. Uh, and it's just for the academics and maybe sports yeah, and, and you know they're looking up to some people that are helping them when they're playing football they're like hey I want to be in the, you know that's that's what I saw looking up to older players so I think Skyview football there's a big big initiative in you know the youth football program uh, so I think it plays really well because it, it's helping us for the future oh there you go well I have one last question for you and as a junior gonna be a senior mm -hmm. I think you'll get this one right. I don't think there'll be a, a problem um, with that at all. Now you're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> what would you prefer? Okay. Would you prefer some equipment that you just put on that you were handed to and it didn't work or function football correctly equipment? in football equipment? Uh -huh. Or would you rather be on outside the games? So we, we gotta we gotta explain this first. So so, so, so would you rather to be dealt with given equipment that's faulty uh -huh. from Skyview? Yeah. Or would you rather be on the outside of the game? Well, I'd definitely be on the outside of the game. Well, there it is, right yeah. there. That's that's what I'm talking about. I mean, it, it, easy, it would it would be I get to hang out with my friend Kevin. <laughs> we get to chop it up. So I love it. I mean, who needs a broken chin strap? I can go chop it up with Kevin. So. Yeah. So <laughs> that's right on. Well, I tell you, this has been Yaro Dovolko, and, and he is a class of 2020 quarterback from Skyview, Utah State commit. Go ahead. Of course. And, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure to have you on our show and outside the games. Again, talking about student athlete uh, situations and things in life that you have to deal with. And again, hashtag student athlete strong, of course. Uh, do look out for Skyview football. They're going to be a, a, a team to be reckoned with this year. Mm -hmm. They're very motivated on what happened last year. How short, you know, they did make it to playoffs, didn't get what they wanted, but they are very motivated and very hungry. hungry. Definitely hungry. Very hungry. Yep. But uh, again, I'm Kevin Ben with Outside the Games. Yard Duvalco. And we appreciate you watching. Have a great evening.